Hi everybody, welcome to another IZ8 DWF arcade repair video. I've just got a few old arcade PCBs from eBay since they were sold very cheaply. This board set was one I was searching for actually. It is really dirty however. But it's not in too bad conditions. This should be a Century Phoenix board set or a very good clone of it. Then I've got two more PCBs. This looks like a Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man bootleg by its layout. And in fact, someone wrote Pac-Man here. I don't plan to repair this one, since it wasn't one of my favorite games when I was a boy, but the PCB was so cheap that it's just a bargain for all the spare parts I can get out of it. It has been modified quite a lot, probably to change the ROM set and to use a DC power supply. And this is the last board, it's almost identical to the previous one, so again a Pac-Man type of game likely. In fact there is a Pac-M marking on this ground field. This PCB also has been modified for regulated DC power supply, but originally it had diode rectifiers and two linear power regulators on board. Now, the first thing I always do with unknown boards is to dump the ROMs and try them on Mami. The last board is indeed a Pac-Man clone made by Model Racing in Italy. And I decided to try repairing this PCB since one of my viewers asked for a Pac-Man original or bootleg PCB, if I would ever find one. And, as I suspected because of the various modifications around the ROM area, the other similar PCB is a Miss Pac-Man bootleg made by Armac, another Italian company. And last, the board set I was interested in has a Playets ROM set, but it is definitely a Phoenix hardware, as this bootleg used the original Phoenix sounds and not the Playets ones. This bootleg was made in Italy by GMP Games. First of all, some pins of the aprons were corroded and did break when I removed them from the sockets for dumping their content. I've soldered new pins, but in the end I decided to substitute the damaged aprons since also the sockets are not of a very good quality. Then, all 2114 RAM ICs have been tested on one of my IC programmer and tester. A few bad ones were readily found and substituted with ICs from the Miss Pac-Man donor board. This PCB has no solder mask on both sides and some areas were more corroded than others. So, I tried to inspect it as well as possible to spot evident broken traces that were jumpered with thin wires. The power pads on the edge connector were not too damaged, but some copper strips were added when necessary. Then the thin layer also has been refreshed on the DC power input pads. Electrolytic capacitors were checked for too high ESR. And a couple of missing ones were added back. This board had very few power bypass capacitors fitted and some of them had broken pins, so I tried to fit new ceramic capacitors on all the needed positions on the PCB. All capacitors circled in red were originally missing or had broken legs. As a last step, I had to work out the pinout of the edge connector by inspection and comparison with the original Pac-Man schematic. The test switch input was originally not wired to the edge connector, so I wired it to an unused pad. So I wired the edge connector with power supply, audio and video only for the moment. So let's power on and see what happens. 
we get a garbage screen, but at least the video sync looks good. Now I'm trying removing one EEPROM at a time. When we have these old sockets, it's always something we can try. And without 7i, things are different. The game is trying to boot, then it gets the watchdog reset and loops again. So, after cleaning all sockets and resetting all EEPROMs, it seems the game starts fine. I have enabled the rock test with the appropriate deep switch and it just advances one level at a time. The sound output, however, is very low. Since all sound effects are barely audible on the speaker, the first thing to check is the final audio amplifier. On this bootleg board, the LM380 integrated amplifier has been used. The AC is wired as a single-ended input amplifier using the inverting pin only, and the non-inverting input has been simply grounded. So I'm going to check first the audio level on pin 6, then the level at the output on pin 8. This is the input, and it seems we have some signal here. But at the output we see basically the same signal level, so the IC is bad. While I was substituting the LM380 amplifier, however, I noticed that the audio level trimmer had a broken leg that was repaired in the past life of this board. The old trimmer was still working fine, but I decided to install a new one with no repaired legs anyway. With the new LM380, all sounds are back to normal. Since all the heat produced from the LM380 IC needs to be dissipated to the surrounding PCB only, I thought I'd add some copper strip to the heatsink pins of the amplifier. This is probably unnecessary in reality, since this IC seems to never get really hot, but it can hurt. Now, this is an interesting fault. Observe the flashing big pills. When they are supposed to disappear, there is instead the last row of pixels that remains on. Here is a close-up and slow-down video of the problem. Fortunately, there are very good troubleshooting guides for the original Pac-Man PCB that more or less apply also to this kind of clones. I've linked the most useful ones down in the description. However, I tried a shortcut. The video circuit uses two prongs and, in my experience, problems like this often are caused by prongs failing in some strange ways. Then, since all prompts in this PCB are socketed, I just tried swapping them with the ones taken from the Miss Pacman PCB that are programmed with the same data. And sure enough, swapping the leftmost prompt in this schematic solved the big pill problem. So far so good, it's about time to play a bit. I've decided to wire a Commodore joystick the lazy way, by just sticking the right wires in the right connector holes.
As you can guess, I almost never played this kind of games when they were popular in the arcades. As I always do, I keep the repaired boards on the bench for a few days, powering them on every so often and playing a bit. When called, this PCB on a few occasions showed the screen. It usually returned to normal after a few minutes. It wasn't easy to capture on screen default, and it was even more difficult to check signals on the relevant IC pins before the fault disappeared. So let's reason a bit about the fault. The two areas circled in red will never get corrupted. This is a very good hint, in fact. The corrupted area is always restricted to the maze, which is where the moving object, like Pac-Man and the ghosts, appear. Of course, I first checked on the troubleshooting documents if this fault was already associated to a particular IC or group of ICs, but the closest fault I found is this one, which is not really what we are observing. For example, letters outside the maids look ok. So let's understand how the video signals are made on this game. The red, green and blue signals are obtained directly from a TTL PROM whose outputs are turned into a weighted 3 bits DAX for red and green and 2 bits DAC for blue. The PROM input is a 4 bits word that selects any of the possible 16 colors. This PROM cannot be a problem for two reasons. First, it's socketed and I could easily swap it with the Miss Pac-Man one, and second, colors outside the maze area were always correct. If we go one step back, we get a 74LS157 multiplexer that drives the color inputs of the PROM. This multiplexer can select one of two possible color words to send to the PROM. We need to see a more broad part of the schematic to understand what are these two possible color words. The first color part is enabled when drawing a static object contained in one of the object ROMs. In this case, the word is generated from the ROM data bus and it passes through a register IC and another TTL PROM before reaching the multiplexer. But I tend to believe this path is working, as we can see letters, numbers and the fruits images when they are outside the video portion that contains also the moving objects. The second color data path is used to display a moving object. The object data is first stored into a RAM area called the attack RAM. Then the data from the attack RAM is sent through another register and from that to the final multiplexer. So this path is a good candidate for default. However, the four attack RAMs are socketed and swapping all of them didn't solve the problem. So now, the problem can be restricted to two ICs, the multiplexer itself and the attack RAM output register. This picture has been taken after the problem was identified anyway. The four rightmost ICs in white sockets are the attack RAM ICs, and the other IC in the white socket is the first video prompt. To identify the problematic IC, I've tried to hit one or the other with a cold spray to try making the fault appear. Now, the two possible failing ICs are unfortunately one next to the other, so the test wasn't really showing a definite answer, but it seemed that hitting the multiplexer directly would make the fault last a bit longer, so I decided to pong it and install the blue socket. Now, even with the original C back in the socket, the fault never appeared again so probably it was some intermittent solder joint, since that area is one of the worst corroded ones. Then I installed a new IC in the socket anyway. Now the board has been fine for a few days, and I tried to play as much as possible. Notice my all-time high score of 8080, which is the Intel CPU that inspired the very famous Z80 CPU, that's the heart of this game too. I think it's a funny coincidence. So, I hope this was an interesting repair and that you have learned something. If you have any question, use the comment section below.
It's all for now. Have a nice time and thank you for watching.